we'd like to show you some additional features that the TechScope has to offer, such as component tests, wiring diagrams, and preset meters. To begin, I'm going to click on Vehicle Selection. Then I'll click on New Vehicle Entry. Then I'm going to click on USA Asian. The year is 2004. I'm working on a Hyundai. Hyundai car. An accent. Base model. We're ready to begin testing. I'm going to click on Lab Scope. And what I'm going to do is have my assistant start the car. And we already have a pattern, but I want to go through the settings with you. First one is CH for channel. When I click on channel, I can now turn on channel 1 by clicking on the enable button. And if I'd like to, I can also turn on channel 2. Once I'm done with that, I then will go click on the lead set. When I click on the lead set, I can select either test lead, KV probe, capacitor probe, low amp probe, high amp probe, temperature, pressure, and vacuum. I'm going to click on test leads. I'll click on then voltage. If I don't know how to set up the scope, I could click on auto setup and that will automatically select the correct amount of time and the correct amount of voltage. So I'm going to do that for you. So that will do the, all the hard work for you. When I click on auto setup, it'll go red. It'll take a few seconds for it to find the correct signal that the engine's running with. And our pattern will be set for the correct amount of time and voltage. But now let's look how to set it up for manual. I'll click on voltage again. I'll click on channel one. I'm going to click on the voltage range I want to work with, so I'll click 50 volts. Then I'm going to click on the 5MS. Right now it says 5MS. That's my time button. When I click on my time button, I can then change my time. And then it will change to the name that I set it to. So when I click on 20 milliseconds, you'll notice that it'll go from the button name of 5MS to 20MS for 20 milliseconds. And my pattern's changed. Let's go ahead and adjust our trigger level. To do that, I'll click on the trigger level with the slash mark through it. When I click on that button, I can tap on channel 1. I can select it for automatic trigger, normal, or none. I'm going to click on normal. Now I'm going to go ahead and activate my trigger and I'm going to move my pattern to the left or to the right. To do that, I'll click on the activate trigger level button and I'll be able to move my trigger back and forth or up or down. Now let's go ahead and zoom our pattern. I'll click on the magnifying glass. When I do, I'm going to select it to 2x and 2x. And you'll notice that my pattern will probably be off the screen, but I could magnify it to what I want to, to zoom in on a complete portion of that pattern. So I zoomed it a little bit, and you can see it got a little bit larger. Let's zoom it once again to another level of 5x and 2x, and look how much larger it got then. Now that I've done that, there's a few other things I can do as well. I can pan across the screen to look at the different portions of the pattern by using the buttons to the far right mark pan, moving the pattern back and forth if there is anything in the window. I also have a glitch capture in the upper right. By clicking on the glitch capture button, I'll have the live pattern at the top. I'll have my assistant snap on the throttle real hard, capturing a slight problem. I'm going to turn my glitch capture off. Along with that, we also have a multimeter built into the scope that will give me my voltage readings and time readings. If I click on DMM, I'll have a screen at the top that gives me my max voltage and my minimum voltage on the screen. I'm going to turn DMM off. Let's go ahead and use the cursors. The button below that are my cursor buttons. When I click on my cursor buttons, I can drag my one to the leading edge of the pattern. And I can click on my number two and bring it to the trailing edge to look at what my time and my voltages are. I'm going to go ahead and turn my cursors off. If I wanted to, I could move my zero reference line up or down on the screen. To do that, I'll click on number one. And now what I'm going to do is I can move the one reference line up or the reference line down, bringing the pattern where I want to see it on the screen. There's also a record feature built into our scope. I'm going to tap on the stop button. That'll stop the pattern. And now I can record it and save it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button. I'm going to rename my pattern to Hyundai. And I'll click OK. And the pattern's now saved. I can now play it back by scrolling left or right. That's playing each frame back. 
or I can go look at the recorded pattern that I saved prior to this or this one by clacking, clicking on the replay button or the reel. And now up will come my recorded pattern, which you'll notice I have Hyundai and a couple others on there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Hyundai and I can move it back and forth again. That's some of the basic things we can do with the full lab scope. Now let's go look at another feature. I'm going to go look at component tests. So I'll click on menu. I'm going to go down to component tests. I'm going to go down to map sensor. When I click on map sensor, I'm going to have my assistant turn off the engine though in the meantime. When I do, it'll ask me if I want to do a voltage test. I'm going to say yes by clicking on it. It'll automatically set the scope up for the correct amount of time, the correct amount of voltage. In this case, it's set it up for a multimeter, but I can change that to a graphing multimeter by clicking on channel. I'll click on strip chart. I'll tap on the menu button, and now I've got a strip chart. You'll notice at the bottom, it gives you instructions on how to use the scope. If I click on info, I can then go ahead and click on diagram, and now I've got a wiring diagram. All the information I need to repair my vehicle or test my component is listed for me there. Not only do I have wiring diagrams, but you also will notice that I have component location and component diagram or connector diagram and circuit description. I'm going to click on the menu button and close out my submenu, but I can now increase the size of my actual wiring diagram by hitting the full button. And if I want to get rid of the diagram, the half screen, I'll click split and then there it is. I'm going to go ahead and now click on menu, have my assistant restart the engine. I'm going to go to an easy to use feature where I have the ability, if I don't have wiring diagrams or information on how to hook it up, I've just got a vehicle that doesn't have that, I can go to preset meters and the scope will give me the correct amount of time and settings for voltage by clicking on the component. I'll go to preset meters, I'll click on mass airflow and map sensor digital and it'll automatically set the scope up for the correct amount of time and the correct amount of voltage for me. Along with that in our scope is a multimeter. I'm going to tap on menu and then I'll click on DMM and I have a regular multimeter that I can set as a strip chart, I can set it as a dial display, and I can set the bottom one as a strip chart and then click on menu and I've got a full multimeter. With that you have seen how our lab scope can work to save your time in solving problems. Not only do we give you all the features of a high-tech scope where you can manipulate everything from trigger to using a glitch capture to zooming a pattern up, but you also have the ability to go ahead and use component tests where I can get wiring diagrams, component locations, connector diagrams, as well as a multimeter and preset meters for where I don't have how to do instructions on how to test a component. I hope our video helped you with your OTC tech scope. We showed you how to enter a vehicle so you could get repair information like wiring diagrams and how to test the component. We also showed you how to use component tests, finding that wiring diagram and finding out how to test that component.